Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back here to another weather video. My name is Andrew Heishman. I'm your lead forecaster here at NWW116. I hope you guys are having a great weekend out there. Glad to have you guys here. So before we get on into it, I want to ask you guys for a favor. If you guys could share this video to your friends and family, help spread that word out there, everybody. So you guys can be obviously weather aware because we do have a couple things that could be very impactful coming up here in the weather world. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that here in a second. But anyways, but let's go ahead and start off here with the current conditions, my friends. So we do have ourselves a lot of precipitation working its way across the south. Now, this is definitely very good because they have been very dry lately. So this will definitely be very beneficial for them. Across portions here of Georgia, Alabama, we have South Carolina and North Carolina currently experiencing a big jet of moisture, which is definitely good, like I said, because they've been pretty dry lately. But look at this. So we zoom our way down here towards Texas. Now, we're going to be seeing on the models here, this is another system that is going to develop a central low pressure and work its way over here to the east and eventually possibly slam right into Louisiana, driving a lot of rain. So that in itself is something we really need to be looking out for as well. Then we work way over here to the northeast. There's really not a whole lot going on. A couple showers this morning across central New York State, but they basically have fizzled out for the most part. Not a whole lot going on out in those regions there. And of course, we actually have ourselves a little bit of snow this morning across areas here of northeastern Iowa into south central Minnesota which is definitely uh, pretty interesting out there. So we are seeing a little bit of snow, hardly any accumulations, if any, is going to be expected. Across the southwest, we got ourselves relatively dry conditions. There ain't a whole lot going on right now, but that will be changing in the future as we are going to be looking at the models here in a minute, and you are going to be seeing that overall. And of course, lastly, we have ourselves a system that is starting to pop up across portions here of western Washington State. Got ourselves a lot of upper elevation snowfall as we will look at the snowfall map so you guys can see just how much we're expecting out there. But overall, a lot of precipitation working its way into the region here as well. All right, so take a look here at the future cast regarding the models here. We're taking a look at the American GFS. And overall, we can actually see how we have that big jet of precipitation roll through. But as we work our way down here in time, you're going to notice how we get ourselves a lot of precipitation working its way throughout portions of eastern Texas through Louisiana, through Mississippi and into Alabama as it works its way here to the northeast across the southeastern United States. So that will be bringing a lot of precipitation as we're going to look here in a moment. Now we had that system that was popping off across the upper northwest driving some snowfall for those upper elevations of northern Washington state. Now according to the NAM model here this is going to continue for the next several hours possibly even pushing some snow throughout portions here of northern Idaho here in northwestern Montana. Now watch this. Now the time is in the top right if you guys want to follow along. This is an eastern time by the way so if you're in the western time just simply subtract three hours but we work our way down here in time and as you can see once we approach the late 12th into the 13th we get ourselves another band of precipitation rolling through some rainfall brought through towards oregon and possibly some more upper level snowfall through towards washington state just adding more to those accumulations which overall could be pretty nasty southwestern canada experiencing a little clipper system out there as we are seeing a bit of snow roll through and later on down in time there could be the possibility of some more precipitation rolling towards the region so definitely watch out if you live out there Alrighty guys, now hopping back down here to the southeastern United States regarding the rainfall accumulation here from the official National Weather Service forecast, we are seeing ourselves a pretty good amount of precipitation expected. Now obviously we have that first jet of precipitation bringing up to a half inch across some portions out there towards central Georgia more than likely, most other areas out there towards the Carolinas from here on out for the next 78 hours I should say, um, should probably remain around a quarter of an inch mostly. But then... Like I said, we have that other system that's going to be rolling through, possibly driving a good amount of rainfall, especially out there towards central southern Louisiana. Possibly two to three inches of rainfall could be in the forecast for you guys. So definitely want to watch out there for that. But this is definitely good news because, like I said, you guys are very dry down there and definitely you could use a lot of this precipitation that is on the way. Then whenever it comes to areas out there towards eastern Texas, look at this. We are seeing well into the three inch margin across the coastal areas here of Texas, which is definitely really good news for you guys as well. So we are seeing a pretty decent amount of precipitation with this next system that's going to be working its way out there. Like I said, it's a pretty solid low pressure system, uh, but it's not going to be anything tropical if that's what you guys are wondering. But uh, overall, like I said, prepare for a lot of rainfall as it definitely seems to be likely. All right, so guys, now we work our way up here to the Pacific Northwest in order to talk about that accumulation for those upper elevations. Now, obviously for the lower, you know, more shallower areas towards the surface, we're not going to be seeing any snowfall, but this is specifically for those upper elevations. 
But my goodness, my friends, over the next 72 hours, there is a good shot that we could see well over three foot across some of those upper elevations out there. Um, so obviously, yeah, if you guys live in those regions, prepare for it because it is definitely going to be very impactful for those regions uh, overall. And as you can see across portions here of uh, obviously western, uh, kind of northwestern Montana and back into the kind of northern side here of Idaho, there is a bit of accumulation as well, possibly some areas over a foot. Alright guys, now we're going to go ahead and switch things up here a bit. Now we're going to talk about the potential of a really big storm system that could be bringing some serious impacts to the country. So, starting off here with the American GFS model here, we work our way down in time. So here's our jet stream. You can see a big kink in the jet stream here. A big trough starts to develop across portions here of the Pacific, the Eastern Pacific. But then you can see how this thing kind of detaches from a long wave trough, we call it, into a short wave, how it gets detached from the main jet stream overall. But then we get ourselves a miniature long wave trough that does develop across portions here of the Northern Plains, eventually sweeping its way across portions here of the Ohio Valley, which will likely bring a lot of nasty conditions. Now, across portions here of the north, we got ourselves a lot of cold temperatures. And with the winds blowing to the southeast, it's basically dragging all of that cold air down. So expect a big cool down to occur for some time next week. For example, this model is kind of showing this here for the 18th overall. So a lot of cold air could be a result. And also, there still is a little bit of things that needs to be worked out, but there could definitely be a little bit of winter weather as well. Who knows? Maybe even some severe thunderstorms could be a possibility out of this system. And of course, we got to keep an eye on that little shortwave trough I was talking about out there to the west, as it could have some precipitational benefits out there towards the southwestern United States. Now you can see just how confident we are in the forecast when taking a look here and comparing it to the ECMWF, or the European model, which is known to be one of the most accurate models out there. Now, same thing happens. We get that big that big trough we were talking about gets detached into a short wave, and then we get that big dip in the jet stream across portions here of the northern plains, through portions of the Midwest, through the Ohio Valley, and eventually that little short wave will roll its way in across the southwestern United States over, you know, California, which could be bringing some rain. Now, all of this is going to be really happening between the 16th through the 17th through the 18th, and then rolling its way through basically even to the 20th, the 19th and 20th. So overall, that is that. And of course, the European model really far down in time has that second trough really starting to kick back up as it gets reattached to the main jet stream overall. But we'll see how, we'll see how that plays out as that's a little bit further than I like to look out whenever it comes to weather models. Alrighty guys, now we're going to switch things up here over to tropical mode because we have ourselves a system that we are monitoring here in the southwestern Caribbean Sea. Now as of the earliest update we have right now, this is a 7 o'clock update as of right now, we are seeing a 30% chance of formation overall. So basically uh, from now until 7 days from now, we have a 30% chance that this storm will turn into a tropical depression or a tropical storm overall. So look out there for that. Now by the time you guys are watching it, uh, this is a 7 a.m. update currently for me. It's you know 11 o'clock in the morning for us. Uh, but by the time you're watching it, it's obviously going to be later. So if you want to check for a new update, go on their site, nhc.noaa.gov, nationalhurricanecenter.noaa.gov, and you guys will be able to see the new update. But right now, it is a 30% chance formation overall through the next seven days and a 0% chance through the next 48 hours as we're not expecting the system to develop anytime soon. All right, now it's time to hop into the weather models regarding this system here, starting off with the American GFS model. So, taking a look here at the overall system. So, we work our way down in time. Now, the GFS really has that central low, that centralized low pressure to really kind of organize itself pretty much here for the late, um, pretty much the late 14th into the early 15th. Just kind of hovers there across the Southwest Caribbean Sea for the next little bit. And then continues to work its way up here to the northeast as it does approach near Jamaica, goes over there towards eastern Cuba potentially, near the Dominican Republic. Now, the track is a little unknown right now, so do not take any of the track information right now because we do not know where the thing is going to go, okay? 
we're still determining if the system is going to be pretty much existent at this point, which it looks like it's a pretty good chance overall. But the GFS has the saying potentially turning into a tropical storm or hurricane as it goes through portions here of the Caribbean and then maybe even working its way out to sea. It could be a possibility. So that is the American GFS. All right, so next up we have ourselves the CMC model. Now this model overall still talks pretty similar to what the GFS had to say, although happening maybe a little bit earlier. Um, this model has that central low kind of developing here right around the 19th. Now this model is still coming through right now on my end, so it's not fully rendered yet, but uh, you can actually see as we approach here for the 19th, how we got that central low that does develop here just south of Cuba. Uh, we don't know any more information from this model as of now. Okay, so lastly, we have ourselves the Icon model here overall. Now, this model kind of agrees with what the GFS has to say, with that low-pressure system kind of developing here for the 18th overall, or really kicking off, I should say, by the 18th, potentially. Um, kind of takes a similar approach to what the GFS had to say, but let me just set this straight, guys. It is still too early to know how strong the storm's going to be. It's still too early to know the exact track of the system. Right now, like I said, we're trying to figure out if the system is going to be even existent at all, which... Most of the models definitely does support a well-defined low-pressure system overall that could develop and maybe develop some pretty nice uh, tropical characteristics down in time. So we'll have to see how that plays out over the next couple of days. Um, obviously, I'm going to give you, you know, be giving you guys updates on this overall, so we'll just have to keep an eye on it over the next few days. Alrighty, my friends. Well, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like. And once again, please consider sharing this with your friends and family to help get that word out there so that you guys can remain safe and prepared. But all right, my friends. Well, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up here for now. Uh, we're going to do a live stream tonight at around 8.30 p.m. Eastern time or 7.30 Central. So if you guys want to have some live updates on the system, feel free to join us then. But all right, my friends. Well, you guys take care. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, guys. And we'll catch you guys later on. Once again, love you guys. Please be safe out there. See you later.